God has a special plan and a purpose for us. We need to understand when we open the scriptures and read the scriptures, God speaks to us. God is going to show up. Unexpectedly, God is going to show up and be able to minister to you. My name is Shirley McLaurin. My name is Michelle. My name is Samantha. Hello and welcome to our Mosaic online service. The Lord is going to do a miracle in you and it is possible to see the light again. Please check us out on social media. We put together a great service for you. Creator, put a system in place. The system that we call is called a prayer. Prayer is a privilege. Prayer changes things. God is anxiously waiting upon you to come. Today, 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 God is wanting to remember you. God sees what is in our hearts and minds. God sees the things that matters to him. God sees the heart. Hello and welcome to our Mosaic Today service. My name is Shirley McLaurin and it is my privilege to welcome you all. We have family and friends watching this program from all over the world. We are very delighted that you are able to join us today. I trust this program will bring you hope, encouragement and blessings to you and your family. Please stay tuned and enjoy the rest of the service. Thank you.
chapter 3 verses 1 to 6. If you have a Bible, please read along with me. Once again, that's Exodus chapter 3 verses 1 to 6. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight, why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. 
And Moses said, Here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face, because he was afraid to look at God. May the Lord add a blessing to this word. Hey, David McLaurin, glad you're able to join us today. We are pleased to welcome you because Mosaic today welcomes you. If you're just tuning in, today we want to talk about God's Word and I want you to know what God has in store for you. If you're just watching us for the very first time, if you just happen to watch us for the first time, I want you to pause. I want you to take a seat. I want you to just pay close attention to you because God has a special word of insight for you. God has a special word for you. He wanted to whisper a special encouragement to you. I just want you to know that it is possible because God speaks and God's word transcends all places and he understands who we are. He understands what we go through. He understands what we face in our everyday lives and God's word is relevant to us. It's not just written thousands of years back, rather, God's word is relevant to us today and you can apply that word to uh, to each of our lives, what we're going through. Many of you have been writing to us. We wanted to say thank you. Please continue to write to us. We love to hear from you. We wanted to pray with you. We wanted to pray for you. We wanted to pray and intercede on your behalf. If we want, enjoy listening from you, we want you to, to partner with us. Many of you have been partnering with us. We wanted to say thank you. Because God has given us this platform. He has given us this technology where we can take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the nations. And we believe that the God has entrusted this very unique task. We have this, this, this mandate God has given to the church to take the gospel to the nations. We call this as the Great Commission. Thank you for being part of this. And today I wanted to talk about the seven sayings on the cross. I want to talk about the Good Friday service, our Good Friday theme-oriented presentation today. I have enjoy reading books. I enjoy watching documentaries and doing research. People ask me, David, what do you do? I read Bible. I study Bible. I preach Bible. I, I read a lot. And uh, recently, as I was getting ready for this talk, I was reading the last words of the people who made a profound difference in our world. The last words are so important. Last words are so precious. You often save the last words for your family. You will always save those last precious insights to your immediate family members. As I was compiling, as I was doing research for this talk, Sir Winston Churchill said, I am bored with it all. That was the last spoken word. Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs said, Oh, wow, oh, wow. Those were the phrases of Steve Jobs. And then after that, he breathed his last. Nelson Mandela. The last verse of Nelson Mandela was, I'm ready to die. I'm ready to die. Mahatma Gandhi, his last words were, Oh God, oh God, that were the last words. This young rabbi came from Nazareth. This young rabbi came and preached the kingdom of of God. This young rabbi proclaimed about God who is interested. This young rabbi introduced us to the kingdom of God. And as he was ministering, teaching and traveling, explaining about the kingdom of God, he healed many people. He caused the lame to walk. He caused the blind people to see even at one point. Jesus was standing, it is one of his closest buddies, tomb outside. And then Jesus says, Lazarus, come out. Instantly. The scripture says instantly. 
A dead man wakes up. A dead man hears. A dead man responds. A dead man wakes up. When Jesus calls this man, he's awake and he instructs his friends to untie Lazarus. So Jesus of Nazareth, the Jesus rabbi, young rabbi who proclaimed this kingdom of God, he was on the cross. He was tired, exhausted, experienced extreme fatigue, probably dehydrated a lot, probably he haven't had anything to eat. He makes seven short prayers. I want you to picture this. Jesus was on the cross. He was looking down from the cross. This is a scene. I want you to capture this scene with Jesus upon the cross. And the scene was so distur distressing to him. The Roman soldiers were gambling for his clothes. The criminals on both sides of him. Religious leaders were mocking him. The crowds were, were, were crying and yelling and blaspheming him. In spite of this situation, in spite of this distressing situation, Jesus' first words on the cross, the first words was, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. The words, Father, forgive them, shows the merciful heart of God. Father, forgive them means it, it, it is a very unmatched mercy of God, unmatched love of God towards his creation, towards his children. When Jesus looked at these people, there was chaos. People were laughing, people were crying, people were mocking, people were gambling, people were saying all types of insults in midst of those things. Jesus' first words were, Father, forgive them. Every time Jesus addressed God as a father, he always had this very exclusive, unique relationship with God. He, he often said to his disciples, he is my father. He did not say, he is your father. He did not say, rather he said, he is my father. And my father has a very unique relationship with Jesus. And he's making a play to a father. He's making a cry to the father. He's making a prayer to the father and said, father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. The merciful heart of God is shown clearly. If you trusted the person of Jesus Christ, if you believe in the person of Jesus Christ, if Jesus could forgive the people during the crucifixion time, as the children of God, we ought to forgive others as well. I want you to pause and ask you, are there anyone in your life that you need to forgive? Are there anyone in your life that you need to let go? Forgive them. Get moving. Keep moving. Are you ready to forgive? The first word, the first cry, the first prayer, the first Praise of Jesus on the cross was, Father, forgive them. Today, I'm inviting you. Do an audit on your life to see if you ever need to ask someone forgiveness. Or maybe you need to forgive somebody. Ask forgiveness. It's possible. It shows great humility. It shows that you are beyond what people can think. It shows that you are a child of the living God. The second phrase that Jesus says to this man is that, Today you will be with me in paradise. Picture this, Jesus in the middle, one criminal on the one side, another criminal on the other side, and Jesus was in the middle, and the 
one of the criminals said to Jesus and said, Jesus, I know that you are a very innocent man. And then he makes this very, very profound statement and said, in your kingdom, remember the word phrase called kingdom? This guy got that word, the kingdom. He said, in your kingdom, remember me. This criminal makes a request to Jesus. This criminal makes a plea to Jesus and said, Jesus, in your kingdom, when you are the king, in your kingdom, you remember me. What a great prayer it was. A great request. And Jesus says to this man, listen to me carefully, and says, today you will be with me in paradise. Today you will be with me in paradise. It is a great promise that God desires to give to everyone who calls upon him. If you call the name of the Lord, the Lord would give you the promise that he took and say, you will be with me in paradise. It shows that the salvation is possible to anyone. You could be a CEO, you could be a clerk, you could be a doctor, you could be an engineer, you could be a photographer, you could be a software guy. Salvation is available to all professions, including criminals. We just received a letter a few weeks ago. Did you know that some people watch music today in a prison? We received some feedback. People watch our program in the prisons. So people who watch in prisons, the Lord says, you will be with me in paradise. There is hope for people. Salvation is available to anyone. Not only to anyone, but at any place. You could be in a restaurant and you could re receive salvation. You could be in a church and receive the salvation. You could be in a living room and receive salvation. You could be in a hospital and receive salvation. You could be at an airport. You can still receive salvation at any time of the day. In the morning, afternoon, evening, night, any time of the day, it is possible. When you cry out to God with all your heart and say, remember me in your kingdom, the Lord would say, today you will be with me in paradise. In the morning, he was a convicted criminal according to the Roman justice. In the evening, he is in the fellowship of God in the paradise. He was a friend of God in the evening. I don't know who you are. I don't know what situation you've been facing. But salvation is possible. If you were to call upon the name of the Lord, it is possible to see and experience this paradise, this eternal life God desires to give to each one of us. We don't have to wait a thousand years. We don't have to wait for 100 years. The eternal life begins today. Today, today, you wake up in the morning, realize that you are on your way. You are living your eternal life today. The third word that Jesus uttered on the cross says, dear woman, here is your son. Jesus probably looking at his mother. Probably Joseph, her husband died. And uh, Jesus entrusts his mother to his disciple. He says, here is your mother. Relationships are important to God. Relationships are important to Jesus. It shows the responsibility of the son towards his parents. We have the responsibility towards our parents. When they are old, when they are no longer functioning, it is your obligation to care, to provide for your parents, for your family. God ultimately wants us to invite to the family of God. God invites you to become part of the family of God. And he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Nor I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be part of the God's family. Fourth phrase, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Remember the first words, first uh, phrase he said, 
he addressed God as a father. And second time, he's addressing not as a father, but says, God. In Aramaic, it means, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When Jesus was carrying the weight of this sin, of this whole world, he felt the separation. God's judgment was upon him. And then he was God being separated because of the sinful nature of humans was upon Jesus. And every time we sin against God, we become separated. Prophecy fulfilled. Number five, Jesus said, I am thirsty. In the Old Testament, Jesus said, "Come." God said, come unto me, all those who are tired and weary, I'll give you waters, living waters. In John chapter 4, verse 4, 14, where Jesus says to the Samaritan woman, if you drink water from this well, you would feel, experience thirst again. You feel thirsty again. You'll be thirsty again. But if I were to give you the living waters, you will never be thirsty again. You will never experience this thirst again. Psalm 69, verse 21, Jesus said, I am thirsty. Jesus said, I am thirsty. Fulfill a promise as a true human on the cross. He paid your penalty on the cross. God invites us to come to his presence and God invites us to meet halfway. God invites us to meet halfway at the foot of the cross. When we come to the cross, God shows and demonstrates his love on the cross. And the sixth word, it says, I'm finished. It is Jesus' verse number six is that it is finished. Jesus said, it is finished. He said, he did not say, I am finished. Rather, he says, it is finished, meaning a title is tie. Tetelesta is like paid in full, has been, the work has been completed. If an owner gives a job to a worker, upon completion of the job, the worker would come back and say, Tetelesta, meaning the job has been completed. A painter working on an art at the end of the painting takes the brush and put the last stroke and says, Tetelesta, meaning it has been completed. A writer would write the last verse, the end, the manuscript has been completed, and he says, Tetelest tie. When you buy merchandise, when you buy a product or a service, you get a receipt. On the receipt, it says, Tetelest tie, meaning paid in full, has been completed. Jesus completed a task on the cross. The seventh word, the last word, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Jesus died. Nobody killed him. Jesus made this prophecy. I have the power to lay down my life. I have the power to take it back. And he gave his life voluntarily. No blood, no nails, no spear. Nothing has done that. Rather, he voluntarily gave this, his life. Nobody killed him. And then after uttering that verse into your hands, I commit my spirit. It has a lot of theological meaning to that. One of the effects of that was the, the curtain was ripped from top to bottom in the temple. It was a noon day. It was dark. The sun was darkened. The centurion said, he looked at this whole scenario and said, truly, truly, he was a son of God. And the interesting aftermath was that the dead people came back to life. Imagine you go to your funeral service, you come back, and then they come back again. Imagine how scary or spooky would that be. That truly happened at the Good Friday service. As we try to wrap this up, I don't know who you are. I don't know where you're watching our program. I don't know where you're listening to our program. God paid this huge price for us on the cross. God came in the person of Jesus. 
He shed his precious blood for us on the cross. Through his sacrificial death on the cross, he paid a price and he redeemed us. He redeemed us to himself. So we would be with him for all eternity. We would be with him for all eternity. What a joyful occasion is this. It's Friday. Good Friday. Jesus died. But the weekend is coming. Sunday is coming. We will celebrate that. Jesus Christ coming back to life. I wanted to pray for you. Father, thank you, God, for every person who is watching a program today. Lord, as we are mindful of your word, it's somber, it's, it's, it's reflective, and it's thoughtful of what you have done for us on the cross. We don't take it lightly. We seriously pay attention to this, and we wanted to lift your name high. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. thank you for tuning into our services week after week as we continue to dive deeper into God's Word and worship Him through song and prayer. We would love to connect with you, whether that's through email or any other way, we'd love to hear from you. Your prayer requests are important to us so that we can pray with you as you encourage us as well. Next, I'd like to invite you to partner with us with your gifts and offerings. All gifts and offerings are tax deductible. The link to submit those is displayed just below. And we thank you for your partnership. Finally, check out our website and share it with your friends and family as the Lord continues to bless us each and every week. See you next week. Same time, same place. Until then, God's best be yours. Thank you. Hey, it's Michelle. I hope you've been enjoying our weekly services. We are here for you every week. We are here to serve and empower you and your family. I'd like to invite you to become a global partner with Mosaic today. Together, we can take the gospel to the nations. Jesus is in the business of changing and transforming lives and is calling us to complete this very unique task. Want to invest in the faith of the next generation? Global partners are needed to help support this ministry by committing to $100 per month. And remember, there's one life to live, one life to give, and one life to serve. 
please check out our website and sign up to become a global partner today. Thank you. Hey, David, glad you're able to join us today. We have this program, Mosaic Today. We always have this tradition to wrap our service with the Lord's Prayer. I want you to bow your heads with me, and I don't know where you're sitting. If you're sitting on the floor, I invite you to please stand. If you're sitting on a couch, I invite you to please stand. If you're sitting on a chair, I invite you to please stand, because we simply want to pay our respect to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. I'm going to repeat the Lord's Prayer. If you know the Lord's Prayer, no matter what languages you speak, it doesn't matter. The Lord understands all languages. One day, Jesus' disciples came to Jesus and said, Jesus, please teach us to pray. And Jesus taught them this prayer, the Lord's Prayer we're going to recite now. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and to keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for your time. Thank you for watching Mosaic today. I'll see you next week, same time and same place. Until then, may God's best be yours. Shalom and peace. Thank you. This program is made possible by gifts from viewers like you. Thank you. Please check us out on social media. Check out our website and please share it with your family and friends. Thank you for choosing to tune into our program. May God's best be yours. Thank you for watching. Have a blessed day.